नमस्ते भैया नमस्ते एवरीवन वी स्टिल हैव नमस्ते नमस्ते वी स्टिल हैव थ्री मिनट्स टू गो फॉर द सेशन बट लाइक लेट्स सी इफ एनी पार्टिसिपेंट्स हैज गॉट एनीथिंग टू शेयर द टेक अवे इज लर्निंग फ्रॉम द सेशंस और काइंड ऑफ दैट यस विनय दीदी नमस्ते नमस्ते सर sir i am totally speechless when it comes to sharing my learning because it has been so profound i don't think i have the right words one thing that i understood sir was how little i have understood so far i mean uh, what i know of uhv is maybe one dot out of all that is yet to know so that has been my biggest learning sir and uh, especially yesterday's uh, session by kumar bhaiya when he spoke about existence and uh, today when we understood existence and coexistence i i don't think bhaiya i have been able to assimilate everything uh, that he was explaining to us but maybe i have got a small glimpse for example of uh, space and the submergence of all the units in space and these units have a boundary whereas space does not have a boundary and some of these units have consciousness and they are active whereas space is not active at all uh, it is very very fascinating sir and i am very thankful for whatever little i have been able to understand i still have lot of doubts sir so maybe gradually these doubts will get cleared mm -hmm. come to the weekly meeting regularly most of the doubts will get clear in the weekly meetings <laughs> thank you sir <laughs> all right thank you anybody else would like to uh, share the reflection your reflections your takeaways from refresher one part two yes kita didi bhaiya namaste bhaiya namaste sabhi ko namaste bhaiya it is my observation uh, for the past four days bhaiya uh, i was able to get the content and i was able to do well with all the polls and quizzes but yesterday evening right from existence and from today morning to me it is little bit heavy for me bhaiya i need some more time to take it inward bhaiya so thereby i faced a difficulty in the quizzes uh, i think uh, i am a slow learner and i need to make progress in a smaller way to understand the depth of each and every word and terms that was put up by you so that is my observation by you and i think i have to go one more time by you it is very very profound and enriching by you but i am little bit slow in taking up it in word so that is my observation by you Uh, can you put your comments on it by ya i mean it takes time to internalize and to verify mm -hmm. but uh, you know the uh, continuous exploration awareness and the evaluation would help us to you know, understand the concepts and uh, you know live with it Mm -hmm. that's fine i mean it's a gradual process important thing is that uh, you know we are there in the process and you know we need to continue with the process of exploration mm -hmm. thank you okay thank you dr bhuneshwari ji Dr. Bhuvne Swari ji, you have microphone. <coughs> okay. We shall be starting the session. Sum up. 
and uh, way forward. Are you ready? You can just say yes in the chat if you are ready. <coughs> okay, so we are ready. Um, you know, on the first session of this refresher one part two, uh, we understood what is value. So value is basically participation in the larger order. A pain is participating in education. Uh, water is participating in ensuring the health of the body. A fan is participating in creating conducive temperature in the room. So if the fan is not functioning, And though it may be a very expensive, but is it valuable fan? Would that fan have any value if the blades are not rotating? What do you think? No. If the ink in the writing pen is not there and the pen is not able to write on the paper, does that pen? has any value? No. Good. So we are able to see that my value is basically my participation. My participation in the larger order. So what would be my value for myself? So as an individual, I want to ensure the harmony within. So value of your activity, the desired thoughts and expectation is your participation in ensuring harmony within you. If you are able to do it, you are valuable. Or you are in a process of becoming valuable. Similarly, we want to nurture our body, protect our body, and we want to do the right utilization of, of the body. We want to ensure the health of the body. And that is what your participation towards your body, ensuring health and utilizing body to perform activities as human being. Similarly, you know, we have aspiration to ensure the harmony in the family. So what would be my value in the family? It's participation in the harmony. I have this basic desire of harmonious society. So your value in the society, your participation in harmony. Similarly, your value in the nature is your participation in ensuring harmony in the nature. And your value in the existence is your participation in the coexistence. So, so far from introductory workshop till refresher one part two, we have explored the universal values of human being. And this morning we had a discussions on coexistence. The whole existence is in the form of coexistence. And the reflection of coexistence, we could easily see on every unit. So every, in the whole existence, you know, we have this coexistence, we have harmony, we have relationship, we have interconnectedness, we have interdependency, we have mutual fulfilling things. So this is all reflections of the coexistence. 
at all the expanse of our being. So, you know, when we discussed about the interconnectedness in the nature, so that reflection of the coexistence can be seen in the forms of harmony and the relationship. And human being has a potential to understand the harmony in the nature and to be mutually fulfilling as the rest of the three orders. When we talked about society, you know, we have identified the human goal of right understanding and right feeling in every individual prosperity, in every family, fearlessness, trust in the society, coexistence at the level of nature and existence. So this is what the human nature relationship, which is again the reflections of the coexistence. And you have potential, you know, through participation of individuals and the families in the various societal systems, and we talk those five dimensions, systems from education, sanskar to exchange and storage. When we are having discussions on family, you know, the feelings like trust, respect, affection, care, guidance, to the love, you know, these are the feelings of coexistence. You might have realized yesterday and today, you know, why these feelings are naturally acceptable to us. Because every single unit is related with every single other unit. And that's the reason we also have this natural acceptance to be related to all, that is love. So the reflection of the coexistence, we can see in the, in the form of human-human relationship. And each one of us has this potential to understand these feelings, the feelings of mutual happiness. When we see human being as the coexistence of self and body, so the self and body relationship, and we have potential for the feeling of self-regulation. <clears throat> and in fact, when we see the basic aspiration of human being as continuous happiness, which is inclusive of happiness, peace, satisfaction, and bliss, so here also we can see the reflection of the coexistence in our build to live with continuous happiness. And each one of us has this potential for right understanding and right feeling and right thought, which leads to the mutually fulfilling behavior, work and the participation. So understanding this and living with this. So these are the universal values. You know, we are uh, discussing from our introductory workshop. So now when we look into our current state, when we do the analysis of our desires, and every day we are following this assignment, and most of us are able to see that the majority of the desires get motivated by the external sources like preconditioning and the sensations. So even I invest and spend like three, four years time to fulfill that desire as an outcome, I may achieve a momentary happiness. So if you start seeing that, you know, all of our desire or majority of our desire is basically guided by the preconditioning and sensation. The desire which is guided by natural acceptance, which means by fulfilling it, I would be in a continuous state of happiness. Those desires are naturally acceptable to me. 
when we look into our thoughts you know most of the times we get to see that uh, this organization a very random thought confusing thought and when we start observing our expectations you know we have expectations to be happy by you know expecting favorable feelings from the other we have expectations to be happy by fulfilling the bodily sensations like eating something seeing something reading something we have expectations to make myself happy by physical facilities so if you look into this expectations what kind of expectations we have so most of our expectations you know the dependency is again outside so today you like rasgulla and tomorrow you don't like rasgulla but you start you know liking gulab jamun and then maybe day after tomorrow cake and this is what is happening a very instability now as we are you know following that exercise of seeing the self by the self and if you start doing the keen observation of the content of imagination you know you have you would find that most of the times you are able to catch up these expectations and the thoughts only and these are the lowest activity of the lower self and as long as you know we are here in the b2 this is a state of unhappiness this creates this harmony within because the source for the b2 is generally preconditioning and sensations so shift you know shifting from b2 to b1 this is transformation this is development so the really uh, education has got this role you know to develop the competency wherein each one of us could verify and explore the things within our own self referring to our own natural acceptance to strengthen the content and to strengthen the ability to observe our innate nature our natural acceptance so the b1 block this b1 block is basically the block of harmony so when my b2 block remain guided by the b1 block continuously that is the continuous state of harmony within in the introductory and the refresher one part one you know, most of the times we were talking about the b2 block the desire thoughts and expectation but this time we just also discuss you know the dynamic activities of these high thoughts and expectations in the forms of imaging analyzing selecting and the state activity in the forms of comparing and the testing so we could easily understand looking at the b2 blocks diagram that why we are so unstable why the thoughts and expectations are random and disorganized so understanding the existence is in the form of coexistence this is basically the realization within and this one is the highest state activity of the self the realization of coexistence the realization of existence as coexistence understanding harmony in the nature understanding the feelings of relationship so the coexistence harmony and the relationships this becomes a part of the contemplation so continue, continuously you contemplate on these three things the coexistence harmony and the relationship and this contemplation triggers your imaging your desires 
So now you can see that the desires of coexistence, desires of harmony, desires of relationship. And when you do the analysis part of it, in the thoughts, you have thoughts of coexistence, thoughts of harmony, and the thoughts of relationship. And even when you go for the selecting and testing, again, you select and test the coexistence, harmony, and the relationship. So this is the state of continuous happiness and prosperity. So this is happening in the self, by the self. And it gets reflected through the body. So whatever we do through the body is basically the outcome of the desired thoughts and expectations we have. So when it comes to the behavior, you know, the human interactions with the other human being is the behavior. Or when it comes to the work, the human's interactions with the rest of the nature, or when it comes to the participation, human participation in the larger order is remain guided by the P1 block. So you are in harmony within and you are sharing that harmony outside with the rest of the nature and the human being. So this much we talked in this workshop. Let me see if there is any uh, question or any sharing. Yes, Rabindra Bhaiya. Sir, 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 namaste, namaste, sir. Namaste. So, uh, uh, this uh, pure self, uh, the block of B1 and B2, the very interesting of uh, uh, the unit is contemplation. So, that is uh, the part of B1 and B2. So, the contemplation of my participation, like my thinking, my observation is the, uh, the vital part of this B1 and B2 block. So, ultimately, we have to reach at this uh, B1 block. Uh, the initiation of this contemplation uh, uh, is very, very important because uh, this is in the part one and or, or B1 block and B2 block. That is my observation. So, so that you know, we can think about you know, because that is observation what we see uh, that you know, get out of uh, you know, or think you know, or, or get satisfaction or any happiness. Whatever we you know, do, uh, uh, the starting is contemplation. So if we write rightly, we, we can uh, uh, go to uh, the right contemplation, like uh, you know, the right kind of you know, uh, thinking. So observation is also the uh, right uh, right evaluation, and uh, so that that is guiding uh, part of this uh, on this block to leading to be one. Correct. Correct. But then, you know, we need to be... But no, uh, why is that... Con yeah. Yes, Vijay, go ahead. Uh, that content is very, very important. Uh, that is uh, uh, common to two blocks, B1 and B2. So that, that is the important vital part of this. Uh, so if you can put our focus, if you can think about uh, participating for the larger order, then we can go in that direction. Nothing otherwise, uh, that direction will not be uh, ha happen anything. Correct. Correct. You know, B, basically the contemplation connects B2, B1 to B2, but you know, we have to be very careful when we uh, talk about contemplation because there is a, a big difference between thoughts, thinking, and contemplating. Contemplation. You know, when, you. The, contem when the contemplation is happening, there are no worries. If there are worries, uh, which means contemplation is not happening. Sometimes so, in we call it chetana, 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 or, or, or chintan or chetana. That is self. Or that is uh, what is the innate feeling. So we can uh, that again the natural acceptance uh, or innate or uh, something uh, that that is your part of this uh, uh, this. Uh, it is written in Hindi in uh, Chintan, but uh, in Odia it is called uh, Chetana. So uh, the word may be different, but it is only the which is pure. And that, that part, you know, if you uh, sometimes we, we uh, ask that comes out of the natural acceptance, that is again the same thing. So so that that part is the purpose of uh, looking with relationship, and that is the vital um, because of the observation also in the morning session and also in part of this 
uh, WhatsApp 2 also. So th this is again guiding uh, factor of uh, reaching to the human goal. So that is the objective. Yeah, yeah, very nice. You know, you have translated contemplation into Hindi, Chintan. So they say that Chintan hai to chinta hai nahi. If the contemplation is happening, there are no worries. If you still have worries, which means the contemplation is not happening. You are, you are just looking at only the thoughts. You know? So that's the difference between thinking and contemplating. contemplating. Yes, thank you, Bia. Thank you, Namaste. Namaste, thank you. Satyagaji. <coughs> Uh, uh, Umezi, here just a little amount of clarification that in Uriya, contemplation is chintan. So chintan and chetana are not the same things. Chetana is consciousness and uh, contemplation is chintan. So chintan and chetana, the, both the words, they convey different meanings. Chetana or chaitanya is consciousness and chintan is contemplation. Just this much. Yes, thank you. Thank you. What about sir? What about the, the words may be different, but the of the objective, the intention of these words may be put in the right way. So that that was uh, no, 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 no. So thank you. Uh, chetana is completely different. That is consciousness, and uh, in Odia, uh, consciousness translated is chetana or chaitanya, and contemplation is chintan. So chintan and chetana are not the same things. Yes, may, uh, so sometimes we, we, we argue with the words, but, uh, but if you are uh, you know, right with this, the, 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 the chintan, it's a good. Thank you. Yeah, so good. I mean, you know, the words are there. We can directly start looking into the reality. And, you know, these are the three different realities. The so one is the contemplation. Two is the consciousness unit. And the three is the pure observer. So these are the three different things. And you know we can uh, find out the words for these three things in different, different languages too. So when we start looking, start seeing the reality, then you know the words hardly matter, or so we understand the correct meaning of that word. Yeah. So let me take. Just one input quickly, Shashikan Bhaiya. Shashikan Gosai Bhaiya, unmute yourself. Hi, Namaste Bhaiya. Namaste, Namaste. Your voice is not reaching to us, Bhaiya. Uh, yes, yes, uh, I am a bit outside, but now I can hear clearly. Can you hear oh. me clearly, sir? Yes, yes, very clear. Yeah. You have any sharing? Your hand? Yeah, that's fine. That's fine. Your hand was being raised. Okay. All right. So, you know, completing the part two of refresher and time to think about what would be my program of action from this moment onwards? So understanding harmony would help me to live in harmony at all the levels of my being from individual, family, society, nature, and existence. So the understanding harmony and living in the harmony, this is what my you know, program, this is so, what should be the program of action? Number one is this exploration. So verify the proposals on the basis of your right. And all these proposals has already been given in the forms of audio lectures, video lectures, in the form of handouts, in the forms of PPTs, in the form of you know all those reference and study material. So you can keep reading, listening, writing about this material so that 
the more you listen to it, the more you, you know, read the content, understanding gets simpler. But at the same time, this continuous discovery, the continuous exploration on these three points are very important. What I really want to be. What is my natural acceptance? And what are my intentions? So the self-exploration on these three points continuously and reading, listening to the reference material and study material. Number two is the self-aware, awareness. So be aware of your desired thoughts and expectations. These desired thoughts and expectations are going on in you. So it's central to, to the existence. So whatever you know, you behave or work outside, you participate outside, is basically the outcome of your desired thoughts and expectations. Anyway, it's going on in you, right? So you can be aware of it. Whether it's a harmonious or disharmonious, it's, it's there. If it is a harmonious, still you have taken the decision to have it. If it is disharmonious, it is your own decision. And that's the reason it is there in your desired thoughts and expectations because of so much of those preconditioning and the sensation. So every moment, self-awareness. Such self-awareness would help us to purify the current state of imagination. This is how the development of competency. So you can evaluate your desired thoughts and expectations on the basis of your natural acceptance to purify the current state, to bring your current state to the naturally acceptable state. And when these two things are same, the naturally acceptable state and the current state, that is the state of harmony within. So exploration, self-exploration, verify the proposals on your right own which leads to the development of right understanding of harmony at all the levels. Look into your feelings, look into your thoughts, which reflects into the harmonious behavior work and participation in the larger order. The second is the self-awareness, which help in development of sanskar. So, the sanskar is basically the total sum of desired thoughts and expectations from all the time. And that is how you know you have your sanskar, I have my sanskar, each one of us has our sanskar. The total sum of desired thoughts and expectations from all time. But my next sanskar, the sanskar at time t plus one, the next moment sanskar is basically sanskar at this moment plus environment at this moment plus exploration at this moment. So there's a possibility that your sanskar got developed in the last five days. Why it has happened? Because the environment and along with the environment, the exploration. It's very interesting, you know. Based on our sanskar, we choose our own environment or we create our own environment. Are you able to see to it? You know, generally, we blame the environment, but based on our own sanskars, we choose or we create our own environment. If anybody you know, has got a lot of sanskars of cricket, you would find that, you know, he would create an environment which is favorable for the cricket. Listening in the commentary, making those stats, collection of information, knowing whatever is happening. If somebody has got the sanskar of politics, he create the environments and join the people of the same preconditioning. But if our, if our sanskar is of Happiness. If we understand that, 
you know, the happiness is most important thing for me. So then we create our own environment, a conducive environment to develop the sanskar within, participating into workshop, volunteering, for you know, being part of these weekly meetings, all of meetings. So the sanskar at this particular moment, plus the environment we create and plus our self-exploration that leads to the sanskar at time plus one. And that is what the transformation, that is what the development. So to transform ourselves from animal consciousness to the human consciousness, this is what is essentially required. So start observing yourself. And whenever you do the observations of yourself, you know, list down whatever you are observing and see that whether it's expectations, whether it's thought, are you able to observe the desires or are you able to observe the relationship or are you able to observe the harmony or are you able to observe the coexistence? So this is what the transformation process, and it's a very gradual process. It's taking a lot of time for me, it's taking a lot of time for each one of us. But then sometimes, you know, we become very harsh and hard for the others. And we expect that the other should transform in a couple of workshops. It's not possible. So each one of us is in the process of transformation. And this the process of self-evolution is possible with this self-exploration, self-verification, and self-evaluation within continuously. So the program of action at the level of society is, you know, the one program could be the people's education program for the adults, like these workshops. So we all can together conduct workshops, workshops for the parents, for the teachers, for the policy makers, for the politicians, for the industrialists, for the cricketers, for the sportsmen, for the farmers, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So this is called as people's education program. Number two, the program of action at the level of society is education and sanskar for the children. So if the value education becomes the part of our academic curriculum. The you know, socially relevant project to create this conducive environment. So a child is getting admission you know, into his preschools. And by the time he graduates from the university, you know, that 15, 20 years is enough to develop within himself or herself. So value-based education. Number three, you know, for this undivided society and universal human order program, it has to be the part of the policies. So the decision makers and the policy makers are thinking on this right from United Nations to the, you know, the government of the countries, government of the states, the local government, everywhere. It becomes a part of the policy. So these are the three different ways you know, the program of action at the level of society. Let us assume if you start exploring you know, within yourself, becoming aware of your desire, thoughts and expectations, continuously evaluating yourself, it takes 10 years to develop a minimum level of right understanding and right feelings with it. We are not saying one year, neither we are saying two years. We are saying 10 years of serious and authentic efforts. And in the next 10 years, if you could help another 10 people in the development of their right understanding and right feelings, so in the 100 years is 1000 crore, and the total human population today is nearly 800 crore. So 100 years is nothing in, you know, as compared to the long history of mankind. If Along with the people's education program, it also becomes a part of education and sanskar, then the child would have this you know, education in his preschools to the university. So 20 to 50 years is enough. 
So along with this people's education program and the value-based education, if it also becomes a part of the policies in 10 to 20 years, whether it's going to take 10 to 20 years, 100 years or 100 plus years, but each one of us is witnessing the impact and the effect of self-exploration within, you know, how we are getting into the harmony, how our relationship is getting developed, uh, the thoughts are becoming more systematic. The life has become more organized. The expenditure has reduced because we understood the prosperity. Right? So whether, and all such sort of exploration and the result, the visible impact we see in ourselves and the others, that's basically gives us a lot of motivation, is self-inspiration. So this Refresher One Part Two online workshop first of all drawn your attention to the need of self-exploration in you. And we do trust that the process of self-exploration must have got initiated and strengthened in you. So continue and evolve the process further. We would like to welcome you to join morning session. So every day morning, you know, there are sessions 5.30 to 6.30 in English, 6.30 to 7.30 in uh, Hindi. And those morning sessions talks about the higher content. It, you know, this current batch morning session is focusing on exercise one, exercise two, the exercises to uh, look within, uh, because that is what the transformation is, seeing the self, by the self, you know, seeing the body by the self and understand development of this understanding. We can, we would like to welcome you to join for the morning sessions. We would also like to, you know, welcome you to join a weekly follow-up meetings. You can also be the UHV team volunteers because by the refresh, by this time, you must be aware that all this universal human value work you know, this is completely a volunteering. So you can be the volunteer. If you can spare one hour, two hours, whatever the time you get in a week for volunteering the things. Because whenever we do the volunteering, it basically helps in development of our own understanding. So volunteering is nothing but yet another program for the self-development. So let me see that who all who all are not the part of morning session yet. If you are not the part of the morning session yet, you can just simply write down in the chat, I. If you are not connected to the morning session, just simply write down I in the chat box. Okay, good. If you are not a regular member of weekly follow-up meetings, then write down double I in the chat box. If we are not part of regular follow-up meetings, weekly meetings, write down double I. If you have not joined the UHV team as a volunteer yet, you can write down triple I. Right, thank you so much. But what do you think? <clears throat> this process of exploration is continuous process. The process of evolution within is continuous. So for that, only workshop to workshop is enough or between the workshops also, we need to you know, continuously exploring within ourselves. So if you think that this is the most important you know, work to do, because this directly connected and associated with my own life. This help us in development of competency to live with definite human conduct. Then you may think of joining, uh, you know, morning sessions, weekly follow-up meetings, and UHV team as a volunteer. As a teacher, you have the potential to transform lives of hundreds and thousands of students. Every year, minimum 120 students are coming to your class. 
so by transforming yourself within yourself you know you can help in transformation of this hundred and thousands of students so let us participate in the societal transformation through personal transformation for to fulfill our own basic aspiration that is continuity of happiness and prosperity it has been always an enriching experience to interact with you all since uh, introductory workshop refresher one part one and now in the part two your questions your sharings also help each one of us to you know develop our own understanding and own feelings so thank you all for being the part of our self journey so i on my behalf and on behalf of uhv team on behalf of nccip and on behalf of aicte express a deep feeling of gratitude towards each one of you thank you so much hope to see you in the morning session quickly meeting and team as a volunteer thank you